हेलो एवरीवन नमस्ते आई एम सारिका गिरी करेंटली अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ बी एस सी एम एल टी फर्स्ट ईयर एट स्कूल ऑफ हेल्थ एंड अलाइड साइंसेस पोखरा यूनिवर्सिटी एंड टूडेज वीडियो इज गोइंग टू बी अबाउट अ ब्रीफ डिस्कशन ऑन एन इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज कोलोरीमेट्री सो लेट्स गेट राइट इन टू द वीडियो Firstly introduction to colorimeter a colorimeter is a light sensitive device that measures the transmittance and absorbance of light passing through a liquid sample the colorimeter is a famous device among the medical students and staffs it is a device it is simply a device used in colorimetry it is used to determine the concentration of substances that absorb light <coughs> in the visible region that is the wavelength of 400 to 700 nanometers this is the visible light spectrum uh so the colorimeter determines the concentration of substances that absorb light in the visible region by measuring the intensity of light which depends on color the color of light is the function of its wavelength and here is a relationship between the wavelength and colors that is if the wavelength is of 400 to 420 nanometer then the color is violet the absorbed color is violet and the red color has a wavelength 630 or 50 to 700 nanometers so this is the picture on the range of the of the visible light spectrum with the wavelength in nanometers besides the uh, wave jaw there there are uh, ultraviolet rays and infrared rays too and this is a most commonly seen and used uh, digital photocolorimeter it can be usually found in hospital laboratories research laboratories academic laboratories and so on the device is extensively used for identification and determination of concentration of substances that absorb light so here is a diagrammatic version of the colorimeter uh yeah it has the wavelength control button and the sample holder that is a cuvet we will discuss about the instrument instrumentation later instrumentation later and so let's get into the introduction of colorimetry colorimetry in uh, in analytical chemistry colorimetry is a technique it is the analytical technique that is uh, used to determine the concentration of colored compounds it is used to determine the concentration of colored compounds uh, or the analytes in the sample solution at the visible spectrum of light that is 400 to 800 nanometers colorimetry is uh, frequently used in biochemical investigations and it involves a quantitative estimation of colors in colorimetry the concentration of a colored solution can be found by comparing the solution to a set of standard solutions of known concentrations this is achieved by comparing the absorbance of uh, the colored light that is the visible light of the unknown solution with the absorbance of the light by the standard solution and it is extensively used for identification and determination of concentration of substances that absorb light it was invented by jules dubosc in the year in the year 1870 they are extremely useful and uh, flexible lab instruments uh, for a wide range of science education labs and the principle of colorimetry the the colorimetry works on the principle that when a monochromatic light passes through a colored solution some specific wavelengths of light are absorbed which is related to the color intensity and the amount of light absorbed or transmitted by a color solution is in accordance with two laws that is beer and lambert's law the the colored solutions have the property of absorbing certain wavelengths of light when a monochromatic light is passed through them and the amount of light absorbed or transmitted by the colored solution is in accordance with two laws that is beer and lambert's law so the 
Beer's law states that the the amount the Beer's law states that when a monochromatic light passes through a colored solution, amount of light amount of light transmitted decreases exponentially with the increase in concentration of the colored substances. <clears throat> Which means that the amount of light absorbed by a colored solution is directly proportional to the concentration of substance in the colored solution. And the Lambert's law states that the amount of light, the when a, when a ray of monochromatic light passes through an absorbing medium, its intensity decreases exponentially as the length of the absorbing medium increases. Which means that the amount of light absorbed by a colored solution depends on the path length of the colored solution, path length of the cubit or the depth of the colored solution. The Beer's law stated that the amount of light absorbed is directly proportional to the concentration of substance in the colored solution, whereas in the Lambert's law, it states that the amount of light absorbed depends on the path length of the cubit or the thickness or the depth of the colored solution. And when these two laws are combined, it is called Beer Lambert's law, which states that when a monochromatic light passes through a colored solution, the absorbance capital A is directly proportional to the path length B to the medium and the concentration C <coughs> of the absorbing species. Uh, so it states that the amount of light transmitted through a colored solution decreases with increase in concentration of the colored solution and the path length of the cubit or thickness of the colored solution. And the relationship is uh, given by capital A absorbance equal to A. A is the proportionally constant, also called the molar absorptivity of the absorbing species. And the B is the path length of the medium or the cubit or the sample of the colored solution. And C is the concentration of the absorbing species. So working of the colorimeter. Uh, it is uh, essential to calibrate the colorimeter before starting the experiment and it can be done with the help of the standard solutions of the non-solute concentration that has to be determined. And then we are filling the cubits and placing them in the cubit holder of the colorimeter. And then a light ray of particular wavelength travels to a series of filters and lenses and the colored light then navigates by taking the help of lenses and then the filter allows the split of a beam of a light into different wavelengths, allowing only one required wavelength to pass through and reach the standard test cubit. As the light beam reaches the cubit, it is transmitted, reflected and absorbed by the solution. And the transmitted light then falls on the photodetector system, which converts the beam into electrical signals and sends it to the meter, which can be a galvanometer. And the electric signals that are measured by the the electric signals are measured by the galvanometer and displayed on the readout system or the output or the computer device. Then uh, the instrumentation of the colorimeter, the parts of the colorimeter, the components of the colorimeter are a light source, which is often an ordinary low voltage filament lamp, and then a set of colored filters, slit, condensing lens. And then a cubit to hold the working solution and then a detector which is usually a photo, a photo register or a photo cell and then a meter to display the output from the detector the output measured by the detector or the detector response so the instrumentation it is uh, the explained version and uh, firstly a light source a light source which is often a tungsten filament lamp a tungsten filament lamp for which provides the color light of wavelength in the visible region that is uh, 400 to 700 or 320 to 700 nanometers or 800 nanometers it is usually 320 to 700 nanometers and then a slit which is a uh, slit is usually uh, it is uh, used in spectrophotometers to narrow the beam of light coming through the lamp to prevent the unwanted or stray light. Uh, and then uh, a monochromator. The monochromator is a means of selecting a sufficiently narrow wave band. The light uh, passing through the slit falls on the monochromator which gives a, which gives a parallel beam of light. 
and the monochromata consists of uh, an intranslate and uh, filters the filters uh, are made of colored glass filters are used for selecting the light of narrow wavelength and they will absorb the light of unwanted wavelength and allow only one only uh, the monochromatic light to pass through uh, for example a green filter absorbs all the color except green light which is allowed to pass through and the filters can be uh, the absorption filter or interference filters so that's about filter and the monochromatic consists of intranslate absorption or interference filter and then prism or diffraction grating uh, which is used for wavelength selection and then the exit slit now through the exit slit the light passes to the cuvet the cuvet is the sample holder that is it holds the sample and the monochromatic light from the filter passes through the colored solution placed in a cuvet which is made up of optical glass or plastic or quartz material it is uh, it has uh, a circular or a rectangular or a square, a square shape and it holds the sample solution for example a solution of red color transmits red light and absorbs the complementary green color so the cuvette should be transparent clean devoid of any scratches bubbles for accurate and precise adhering and then after the cuvette there is the detector or the photosensitive detector they are the photosensitive elements which uh, converts uh, they are the transducers which converts the light energy into <coughs> electrical energy the detector should be uh, sensitive and have short response time the electrical signal generated is directly proportional to the intensity of light falling on the detector so the detectors can be uh, photomultiplied tubes or photoconductive cells or photoemissive cells and so on after the detector after the after the light falls on the detector then it is uh, then the, the detector response uh, can be measured by uh, a galvanometer or an ammeter or a recorder or a digital readout system and the signal may be transmitted to the computer or other printout devices which displays the percent transmission or the optical density to the viewer so this is the instrumentation diagram there is the light source and there is the collimator also called the lens and then there is the monochromator which is usually a prism or grating and then there is the wavelength selector or the filter and then there is the cuvette which holds the sample and then there is the detector which is usually a photocell and then there is the output or the digital display or the meter so here is again a diagrammatic version of the colorimeter as well as the instrumentation or the working process of the colorimetry or the colorimeter. So it has the sample holder and it has the on off switch. It has the wavelength readout, absorbance readout, mode indicators, mode select button, decrease and increase button and the wavelength control so yeah and finally after the light passes through the monochromators uh, and filters and the cuvette and the detector the 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 value or the signal is finally uh, presented on the output it is uh, displayed on the output then uh, a calibration curve can be used to uh, de to uh, find the unknown concentration of the uh, unknown concentration so in a calibration curve we can uh, we can determine the uh, value of unknown concentration by we can uh, determine the value of unknown concentration of a sample by drawing a calibration curve that is uh, a calibration graph on absorbance versus concentration absorbance on the x axis and uh, concentration on the y axis uh, so this is a calibration graph and it passes through the origin 
so uh, it passes through the origin because uh, when the concentration is zero while we take the blank sample and the absorbance should be zero because the concentration should be zero and uh, since the concentration is zero at the absorbance value is zero so it passes through the origin and the graph is non-linear uh, once the calibration graph is done drawn uh, we can calculate the concentration of an unknown sample uh, we should place the, firstly we are we are placing the blank sample on the cuvette and then uh, setting the absorbance value to zero and then now uh, place the unknown concentration and note down the note down the absorbance value we have to place the unknown sample in the same cuvette and measure the absorbance value because uh, we need to make sure that the width is constant the, the width of the cuvette is constant and then we measure the absorbance value and once we get the absorbance value here in the linear graph uh, in the linear line or the straight line that passes through the that is passing through the origin we need to uh, go down directly to the y-axis that is to the concentration line and there uh, the where the two lines meet the point where the two lines meet is the value of our unknown concentration so that's how we uh, determine the unknown concentration using a calibration curve or a graph and then the applications of the colorimeter the colorimeters are widely used to monitor the growth of bacterial or yeast culture and the medical researchers used colorimetry use colorimetry in various fields such as to help locate and count the cell proliferation proliferation to better understand the DNA synthesis and the colorimetry can reveal the cell growth stimulator as well as the inhibitor which can better understand uh, which can help better understand the chemicals best at slowing down the growth of cancerous tumors and the colorimeters are the colorimeters are used to detect uh, the color changes in the reagent solutions which has medical applications including identifying antigens causing specific disease it is uh, used in hospitals and laboratories to estimate the biochemical samples including plasma urine cerebrospinal fluid serum and uh, glucose urea uric acid bilirubin enzymes lipids minerals and so on uh, they are also used to uh, monitor and measure the color of various food and beverages including sugar and vegetable products they are also used in uh, various chemical and biological fields including the analysis of blood water nutrients in soil food stops determining the concentration of a solution or the rates of a reaction and laboratory quality control it also helps in photography that is it helps the photographers to understand how the type of light used affects the colors of objects in the photos and they are also used to check the strength and durability of the colors in the paints and the fabrics to ensure a similar quantity so these are the applications of the colorimeter or the colorimetry and here are the advantages that is it is fast convenient economical and has a simple operation of a spectrometer and they are easily optimized for automation so they do not require an uh, experienced person to handle a colorimeter and the disadvantages are that it has a low sensitivity it needs a huge amount of sample for analysis and the colorless compounds cannot be analyzed because it is only suitable for colored solutions that is if the uh, if the if the solution is not colored it cannot be analyzed by the colorimeter it should be made colored by adding coloring agent that is which may be the chromosomes so that was it this was about colorimeter um thank you